Welcome along to the first video in this tutorial series where we are going to learn how to create a space shooter game using Pi Game Zero. Now in the first part of this series we are going to be simply creating this right here, a little spaceship that flies around the screen when you press the arrow keys. You'll notice too that we can't fly outside of the screen either, I'm trying to fly out to the right there, I'm trying to fly down below the screen but it is not allowing us to do so. Okay, so that is what we are working towards in this first video, a fairly simple start to this project. Okay, now to get started, what I would like you to do today is set up your folders. Okay, so somewhere in your account, can you please make a new folder called Space Shooter? Make that a bit bigger. Okay, and inside of Space Shooter there, if you're in my class, I would like you to paste in the images, the sounds, and the PGZ helper files. Okay, so in the images folder, you've got a bunch of different images there that we need, or sprites that we need to create our game. A couple of backgrounds, enemies, explosions, a uh, game over sign, a player, and a bullet. Okay, we will add some more to this further on down the track, but for now, just to start our game, we're going to keep it simple with just these sprites. Uh, in the sounds folder, we've got five sounds there, so a collision, some background music, power-up sound, some quiet music, and a shoot sound. So when we shoot our bullets, that sound will play. And then we've got the PGZ helper file there, which will give us some additional functionality um, in Pygame Zero to allow us to add some extra features to our game. Alrighty, so once you've got those folders, images, uh, sounds and whatnot set up, you are ready to get started. So I'll get you to jump over to your coding editor. We are using Mew today. Um, and let's get started by creating a brand new file. file. Now before we start uh, typing in our code in, what I'll get you to do is hit the save button at the top. And in that folder you just created called Space Shooter, open it up. And you can call this, I guess, Space Shooter. An appropriate name for our file. And click on save. Alright, so we are good to get started. So I'm going to delete that first line of code there, and I'm simply going to write up the top, import Pygame. Okay, from there, I am going to write from PGZ helper. We're going to import the asterisk, which is importing all the different functions inside of that PGZ helper file. Okay, and that's all we need for now. So the first thing I would like to set up is the game screen itself, just to set up the width and the height of it. So I'm going to use a fair few comments in this code. It's going to be quite a large amount of code by the time we're finished. So I'm going to put in plenty of comments to explain what, what is happening in each section. So I'm going to write here, set game screen size. And we're going to create two variables here. One called width, and we're going to set that to 800 one called height, and we're going to set it to 600. Okay, you don't have to use capital letters for those names, up to you, but I did in this case. Okay, from there, once we have got that done, um, we are going to save it and run it, and you should see, hopefully, an 800 pixel width and a 600 pixel height screen size appear on your page. Close it up once you've got that done and we'll keep on coding. Next thing I'm going to do is just set up the player, which is the spaceship, and its starting coordinates. So I might put another comment here. Set up the player. Oops, I've still got caps lock on. Okay. Um, if I want to be a gaming nerd, I might write spawn position, I guess. That's what you'd probably call it in a computer game. Alright, we're going to create a variable here called player, and it's going to be equal to actor, and in brackets, we're just going to simply write player, and the quotation marks around that. So that's going to look in the images folder for the sprite called player. Okay, so we've now got that little image assigned to the player variable. Okay, now the start position is simply defined by writing player.x. And we're going to set it to 400 pixels on the screen on the x-axis. That's halfway across the page. And then the player.y, we're going to set that to about 500. So it starts down at the bottom of the page. So the page is 600 pixels high. So if we set it about 500 pixels, that'll be not quite at the bottom of the screen, but close to it. Okay. 
I'm not sure if that's going to, actually that won't work just yet because we haven't drawn our player on the screen. Um, so if you want to do that, we might as well do it just to test it out. Let's create a function. It's going to be our draw function. Define draw. Um, and just put in your two brackets and a colon there at the end. And I want you to write player.draw. And we're going to put a comment above that. It says draw the player. I don't think this is going to work just yet, but we'll give it a go and just see. Oh, yeah, there it is. Okay, so when you run your code there, you should have your player sitting on the screen there at position 400 on the x-axis. So remember, that's the middle of the page that runs left to right. And then 500 pixels down on the y-axis, so down in the bottom of the page. If you move your arrow keys, that ship's going nowhere. We haven't coded it up to move just yet, but we've got our screen size and our player working successfully so far. Okay, so let's keep it going here. What we might do next is um, get our player moving. So I'm going to go back in underneath this section here where we just set up our player's coordinates. And we're going to put in the define update function. Okay, this is where basically the code for our game comes into play. I'm just trying to find the right zoom size here. I might go about here because we're going to have a bit of code now. All right, so I'm going to put in a hashtag for a comment here. It's going to say player movements. And we're going to start uh, with, I guess, the up arrow on the keyboard. So we're going to write if keyboard dot up. And then do a colon. So that means if we press the up arrow key on our keyboard, we're going to move our player along the Y axis, so we'll do player.y and you can write player.y equals player.y minus 5 okay that's a quite, well, that's quite a long way to write that out, you can actually shorten that, so instead of writing player.y two times here all you need to do, just delete that second section there, is player.y minus equals 5 Okay, so that's the shorter way to write that. I think we've covered that in previous tutorials. Um, so that's just there to refresh your memory. So that's going to move our player five pixels at a time up the page when we are pressing that up arrow key. And we will be able to hold it down to make our player move around as well, which I'll show you shortly. Uh, we're going to do all the arrow keys now. So we might do the down arrow key next. So if keyboard dot down. We will do player.y. This time it's going to be plus equals. So we're going to move down the page by putting in a plus sign this time and set it to 5. Then we're going to do the right and the left keys. So if keyboard.left, um, put a colon, and we'll do player.x this time. We're working along the x axis. And it's going to be minus equals 5 to move left. If you want to move right, it will be keyboard dot right, put in a colon, and we're going to do player dot x plus equals five. That means we're moving to the right along the x axis. Now we can test this out, it's not going to work properly, but just give it a play and move your arrow keys around. Okay, he should move around. He will have a pretty cool looking trail behind him. You can see how far he moves each time you press an arrow key um, quite clearly with that animation there. So what we need to do to fix that is just go down to where the draw function is at the bottom there. We just need to add in um, one line of code there to refresh our screen. Um, so what we're going to do is just put in a comment here that says refresh the screen. And we are going to write screen.clear can't remember what it runs at, however many frames per second our um, code runs at. But it will update at the screen, I think, every 24, I think it's 24 times per second. Okay, so they just put the brackets in at the end there as well. So it runs the clear function. And now when you run your code, you'll be able to move your little fella around the screen. Now if you try and hit the edge of the page here, he will fly off the screen. So our job now is to make sure that he stays inside the game space so he doesn't fly off the screen. So head back up to your update function here and we're going to add in a little bit more code just to stop him flying off the screen. Okay, so in that section, um, coming in underneath what you've already put in for the keyboard movements, 
We're now going to put in a comment that says, um, stop the player flying off the screen. Okay, we just need to conduct a couple of tests. So the first one is going to be if player dot x is less than 40, then we'll do player dot x equals 40. Okay, so if it tries to go past um, the left-hand side of the page, any further left than 40 pixels on the x-axis, then we're going to stop it and make sure it stays at the 40 pixel mark. It doesn't go any further. I'll show you what I mean by that. So if I give that a run and try to move my player off the left side of the page, he now gets stuck there. Okay, you can still move around every other direction. He just can't go any further left. Okay, you can still fly off the page down and up and to the right. But if I try to move him any further left, he won't go off the page. Okay, we just need to do that for each side of our game screen. So the next one will be if the player.x is greater than, now we know our page is 800 pixels wide, so if I take 40 off that, we'll get 760. So if our player tries to go any further than the 760 pixel point along that x axis, then we're going to set the player's x position to 760. That means it can't go any further than that. Okay, so that will stop him flying off the right side of the page. Let's do the y-axis now, so he can't fly through the top and the bottom of the screen. So we'll do if player.y is less than 35, and we'll set the player.y to 35. And the last one there, if player.y He's greater than 565, so that means he's moving down below the bottom of the screen. Um, we will set player.y to 565. Okay, that limits the movements now in each of those four directions. So let's give it a run, make sure he's working. So I'll try and go down first. Okay, he doesn't go any further now than the bottom of the page. We know the left side works. Let's check the right side. Excellent, he's not going any further and the top of the page. He can't get through the top of the page either. Okay, so I think that is everything done for our player movements. All right, so we've done a couple of things here. We've set up the game screen size, easy enough. Okay, we've brought in our spaceship um, little image for our player. We've defined the movements so he can move with the four arrow keys on the keyboard. And we've also prevented our player from flying off the screen. So it's now constrained to the game screen only. Okay, so that is all we need to do in this video tutorial. I will see you in the next one where we learn how to shoot some bullets. So I'll catch you in that next video.